dot, triple dot set there. Now I'll tell you, this is the Stevens graph, and I'm not too fond of the Stevens graph. Instead, I'm going to take you to the TCP trace graph, where we can get a lot more information about what's going on. So I'll close this down. So I'm going to select Statistics, TCP Stream Graph, and this time I'm going to, going to go to the last option, which is the Time Sequence Graph, TCP Trace. We'll open that up, and I'll start out by showing you the upper left-hand corner again, where we have the sequence number, that's our y-axis. There's the trace file we're looking at. There's the traffic, the source and the destination address of the, for the traffic. I'll move this up now so that we can see the time area down below, as well as the sequence number information. Now we can see there is this really ugly plateau area. And I want to click in and get a little closer to that plateau and see what's going on. A left mouse button will zoom you in. Shift left mouse click will zoom you out. So I'm going to click in until I've got a nice view. I don't want to click too many times because if I do, I might zoom in too fast. So we can see this area of the trace, there's obviously some sort of a problem. So I'm going to look at this portion of the trace right here. Yeah. Now you'll start to see that we don't just have one line, we have multiple lines in here. Now, the black line, as you'll see as I get closer in there, the black line is actually data crossing the cabling system. The gray line underneath it are acknowledgments that go along with those data packets. And the gray line above it is the window size. So I'll move in to this area. This area is the one I'm going to concentrate on. Actually, I'll sort of focus in on all of this area. I'll move in just a little bit closer. All right. Now, it looks to me, from what I can tell, it looks like we had a set of three packets. and now. All packets can't go in the wire at the same time, so if I zoomed in a lot closer, I'd be able to see that the bottom packet went before the next packet, which went before the next packet. Each one of these little things that looks like an I is a packet. Those little black capital I's, those, those are a packet. The bottom of the packet is the sequence number, and then the height of the packet tells you how much data was exchanged in the packet. So I'll, I'll scroll in just a little bit closer. There we go. So it looks like we have a retransmission here. We had a set of three packets that went out on the wire just so close together, it almost looks like the same time. And then the second packet in that set did not arrive at the destination. So over here on the right-hand side, we see the retransmission. Now these little notches that you see down below, each one of those are duplicate acts. So we look at this communication over here. There's the packet being sent, and we can count those notches. One two, three, four, five, six, seven notches. So th those are each duplicate acknowledgments trying to get this packet back down. So obviously the sender had spewed all of those duplicate acts on the wire before it received this packet in the center, and that's what stopped it from sending any further duplicate acts. So it was filling up the pipe with these duplicate acts. Now, if everything goes well, we should be able to match up this graph exactly with our trace file. We should be able to go into our trace file about 585 seconds into the trace, see a series of packets in a row. We should see a number of duplicate acts, and right in the middle of the duplicate acts, it looks like right before act number three, maybe, we have a retransmission. So let's toggle over and take a look at that. So I'm back in the trace, and now what I've done in my trace is I've got two time columns in there. I have the first time column which is based on the time display format of seconds since the beginning of the capture. And then in the preferences area, I've set up a second time column, which is just the delta time column, which is showing me from the end of one packet to the end of the next packet in the trace. And I'm about at 585 seconds into the trace file right here. Now, because of the resolution that I'm working at, I, I need as much real estate on the screen as I can possibly get. So I'm going to move in a couple of those columns and, in fact, that time column right there, I don't need to see that level of granularity. So I'm going to go up to View, uh, Time Display Format, and instead of putting it as Automatic File Format Precision, I'll say that I'm going to go down to the tenths of a second, and that's it. So I'm at 585.0 seconds into the trace. And I'll move that over a little bit, and I'll move the destination over just a little bit. 
protocol over a little bit. And now I get a little bit more information here on the right-hand side. Well, there, 585.2 seconds into the trace, we see a retransmission. But let's see what that retransmission is for. I'm going to open up the middle window. And here we can see it is sequence number 15648181. Now I'm going to scroll up and see where the original packet went out on the wire. That 15648181. Let me bring that window down a little bit so we can see just a little bit more. And there it is. There's the original packet right here that went out on the cabling system at 484.9 seconds into the trace. Now obviously that packet didn't get there because if we look, a little time goes by and we should see an acknowledgement asking for that packet. So I'm going to scroll down and it looks like it might be this packet. I'm going to scroll to the right just a little bit. Yep. Here is an ACK packet saying that I'm asking you for 1564 8181. Now we know that packet went across the wire because here it is right up here. But the other side is saying, look, I'm asking you for this packet. So here's the original ACK with a request for 181 to, to be sent again. We scroll down a little further. There is a packet labeled as duplicate ACK number one. And duplicate ACK number one has an acknowledgement field value of 181. This is the second request for that. It's the first duplicate of the request made above. So this is the second ACK that has that value. Here's a packet that's the third ACK that has that value. And now we have a retransmission that goes on the cabling system. And that retransmission is the 181 that was missing. Then we have a third, another time, sorry, that's our actually our fourth retransmission, uh, or sorry, our fourth, fourth duplicate ACK. There's our fifth, sixth, and seventh duplicate ACK. Now as we scroll through we can see there are additional retransmissions all over in this trace file. But the time sequence graph and that trace file should match up perfectly. So anytime you work with those make sure you toggle back to the trace file to see what's going on in the background so that you can check and see exactly what's happening. But these are great charts and great graphs to print out to show exactly what's happening when TCP communications don't go well. Now this was an upload communication. Now I'm going to show you what happens when you look at a download of a communication. And I'll show you what it looks like when you pick the wrong side of a communication. Now I'm going to open up a trace file and this one is called download bad. Here we go. Now I'm just highlighting the very first packet of the trace file and I'm going to select statistics, stream graph, and I'll do the TCP trace stream graph. Now when you see a graph that looks this boring, then you've picked the wrong side of the communications. There's no data being sent that way. These are all just ACK packets being sent along the cable. So close that down and pick the other side of the communication. So here I'm just going to go to the next packet. That first one was the source of 10.0.52.164, our client. And our client's the one that should be receiving the data. So we want to go to the server side, the side that's sending the data. Select statistics, TCP stream graph, and again, time sequence graph, TCP trace. Now in the upper left-hand corner, we see the name of the trace that we've opened up, and we see the traffic, the source, and the destination. 